Let's get some more reaction, shall we? We're joined from our Westminster studio, as you can see, uh, by Raheem Kazam, a former advisor to Nigel Farage, by the way, but he's also announced that he's going to stand to be UKIP's next leader. So you must be delighted that your main contender, some say the strongest contender for the leadership, is no longer in the race. Uh, no, I'm certainly not delighted. I'm a personal friend of Stevens. I regard him as a close personal friend. And I've sent him, and we've exchanged text messages tonight with me expressing my deepest sympathies for him and the position he faced within the party. I think there can be no doubt that he has been on the receiving end of some very, very bad behavior from people inside the party. And I extend an invitation to Mr. Wolf that if I win at the next leadership election, he should come back and be our migration spokesman. He has been an absolute great asset to the party, and I'm devastated that he's out of this. Um, Rahim, do you think that's what it's all about, that particular fight, a clash of personalities? He isn't saying that. He is saying, and I don't know what conversations you've had with him today, but he is saying that the party is in a death spiral. That's why he's quitting. I think we are at half-time in a football match now. We're 3-0 behind, and there is a lot of work to be done. Uh, we're not in a death spiral, but it's certainly not good at the moment. Uh, people need to be coming up with positive solutions for the party. People need to be coming up with positive solutions for the country. That is what the UK Independence Party is supposed to be about. It is not supposed to be about infighting. It is not supposed to be about leadership candidates, background briefing to journalists about how nasty the other one is. And I would urge everybody at the next leadership election, and in fact those even not in the leadership election, to cut it out right now and do what's best for this country. 52% of people voted for Brexit, and we know only with a strong UK opposition will it happen. You know, Raheem, it's really interesting to hear you say all of that, um, because we, we've been hearing from a number of people tonight, I including the party's chairman, who seem to be in a bit of denial that there's problems in the party. In fact, Paul described this as a great day for UKIP. You're being honest tonight, clearly, and saying that there are problems and we need to get it sorted. In the context of, of being Nigel Farage's former advisor, do you think it was perhaps a mistake for him to step down so soon after Brexit? Uh, yes, I do, actually. I think, I think it was a mistake for him to step down after the general election last year. I think it was a mistake for him to step down this time also. But, you know, Nigel has committed his life, his, a lot of his adult life, to delivering the Brexit referendum, as you well know. He has had so much in terms of stick from the opposition, so much in terms of stick from the media, and I watched him grapple with that over the last couple of years, being his right-hand man. However, we have to move on. He's taken a decision. Uh, I have spoken to him today, and I've said, listen, if I take over as UKIP leader, I would make you the honorary president of UKIP. I think you deserve that. I think the party needs you. It needs your vision. It needs your influence. And it needs your experience, most of all. And I think this is what we're forgetting nowadays. You know, the, to the public, UKIP has been Nigel Farage, and Nigel Farage has been UKIP. There's no point ignoring that. There's no point trying to sweep him under the rug. You know, when I announced my leadership candidacy, and when I announced my website, makeukipgreatagain.com, it was basically to continue Nigel's legacy in the party. The people who don't want to do that, the people who want to cut him out of UKIP, basically want to turn UKIP into something it's not. Uh, you haven't got much time left to get this sorted, have you? Um, we now know Theresa May's plans. Um, to, to start the Brexit procedure. Your job as UKIP, and you've said it yourself tonight, isn't to come on the BBC and talk about infighting and, and, and trying to find a leader and trying to find direction. Your job is to make sure that Theresa May does her job. And we should be always sceptical of government, especially a government led by a Remain declared campaigner as we went into the uh, European Union referendum and so I don't trust Theresa May to deliver on Brexit even though there is a good team to, trying to deliver within the Conservative Party on Brexit but you know we can't be a one-party state we can't be uh, in a country whereby the Labour Party is in turmoil UKIP is in turmoil and the Conservative Party get a free ride at the next election it's not British to have no opposition and so UKIP must pull itself up by the bootstraps now and deliver that opposition and I for one would be delighted if we can get behind a leader if we can all get behind a leader and really deliver on what people want and you've got to find one first as well uh, Raheem many thanks uh, for speaking to us tonight thank you well uh, there's going to be uh, coverage uh, on the latest developments uh, with UKIP uh, and uh, Sue Wolf's uh, resignation in tomorrow's papers plus many other stories of course we'll be finding out how they cover them what they're covering at 10.40 this evening in the paper.